So they reach out to y'all. Oh yeah. Short transfer. He reached out to us. And we were glad to take him on board. Jeff, the run game one year ago till now. What, what have you seen in advancements? How can you be better? Uh, just you know, uh, last year we were just trying to get the install in. So we weren't really good at the details of it. I mean, you can just go back and watch our games. Our track steps were all over the place. There was no consistency. Uh, we're just really trying to clean up our details uh, of our work. And, you know, our ball security wasn't bad last year. But there was still a lot of instances where the ball was loose. We just got lucky and didn't fumble it. Mm -hmm. We're trying to clean that up. Our track steps, the way we fit up on our pass protection, not so much. We were very successful in our pass protection last year, believe it or not, from our position. But the way it looks, the, the, the technique of it, the small things, you know, just the details of it, we're really trying to get you know, just finer in our work. Rakeem said he's been like, watching the film with offensive line and all that stuff. And, I mean, that's got to help with him just coming in at the start of camp last year. Can't say enough about him right now. I don't think you ever heard me comment about his practice habits last year. He was very talented. He was very good. But he is, in the, his last three days, we haven't got today's results back yet. Personal best and his highest percentage of, of yards of just effort. Mm -hmm. He was at 70% of his max, um, or the highest, three days in a row. And I, I would be surprised if he wasn't four days in a row today, which he's never had that. Uh, he's been the top guy in our room now, three days in a row. And Devois and Chase won't want to see this when it gets put out there. <laughs> but Rakeem's done that. And I hope today's day four. I really do for him. What, at what point did he kind of come clean about him about his shoulder? Uh, after the season, after, so uh, he, he I called him soft. I, you know, I every everything you can say as a coach, you know, to motivate somebody, and then you find out he's got a torn labrum and a rotator cuff. And I went from six foot three to about four foot ten in a day. Uh, I felt terrible. Uh, I love the kid. I spent a lot of time with him through the years, and uh, he's tough, tough young man. Uh, how did the turnover count go today? Did you guys get the belt, or uh, you know, uh, we 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 turned it over quite a few times today. So the belt went back to old Coach Chief and the defense. Mostly picks. Were there any fumbles in there? Uh, no fumbles on my field. I don't think there were any fumbles <laughs> on the other field. Uh, you know, we've got two. We've got two split practices going right now. So our reps are incredible. Which I tried to tell Coach Morris. You know, that does give us twice the opportunities for turnovers. But he didn't. He didn't want to listen to me. He's an assistant head coach, which means I get suggestions. <laughs> He's head coach. He makes all decisions. <laughs> it's kind of intriguing to. How do you look at that? Um, there, I don't know how many coaches in the country, uh, Power Five, have their top three backs returning. So I'm extremely blessed. And not that they're returning on the depth chart. All three played major, major important minutes last year. Unfortunately, two of them missed significant time because of injury. Uh, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't, you know, there's some things about being a head coach uh, I miss. Uh, We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Assistant head coach, you should be able to, you know, come on in here. Oh, yeah. That's a, when we get to win it again, I'll be the first one in here. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you look at the – you get a bird's eye view of the offensive line uh, from last year and this year. Yes, what do you see differences in that? Uh, just our depth. I mean, I, I, you know, I was a head coach for 15 years, so – and my brother was my offensive line coach, so I empathize with Coach Fry. I look at things from a little different perspective probably. But when you're a coach – you can only motivate so much when there's no potential threat for uh, a backup. And, you know, I love my wife. There's probably a great potential for somebody to take my spot. I'm on my best behavior all the time. Uh, well, I went to the line. There was really no way he could. You know, those guys were motivated. I mean, the other, I mean, he's a very self-motivated human. But it's still, when you know you're the only one out there, it's just hard. And when you practice. I mean, how do you really practice? If you're so terrified, one of them's going to get hurt. You're almost practicing the whole time going, watch your step. I mean, be careful. You can't get better at football that way. So now we've got 16 to 17 linemen out there. And you know, we're still nervous. We don't want anybody to get injured. Uh, but we've got eight or nine going on one field and eight or nine going on another field. And I think it's going to really help us game six on uh, when things just start happening in this league, that at least the guy that goes out there has played significant steps. Uh, and reps and been graded under a high pressure back in August. Jeff, you got to have a plan to rebuild in the SEC. What have you seen of what Chad and where y'all are in that process? Uh, two things, uh, our D-line and O-line depth and just uh, our commitment to our culture, to really everybody buying in. And I know it's the most over -word, overused word in college football history right now, uh, but this team really is bought in. We're extremely young. 
uh, but the message Coach Morris is speaking, uh, they're repeating and they're living it. Uh, and that's, that's been the biggest difference, D-line, O-line, and obviously we recruited some really good skill kids we were very excited about. Uh, we're going to be leaning on them quick, and that's a little scary, but it's also a blessing. It could, could, change, could change from now to December, and it could change from December to February, but how many do you go into the recruiting class trying to sign the running backs? Uh, you know, we, on our board, we have one dash two, meaning if we lose one, we're going to take one, which we have the commitment, and if we were to lose another, we'd take two. So I'm in uh, constant communications with other backs. I've been very upfront with them, um, and then we'll just see how this thing plays out. But I'd say one dash two, what says on our board. Which Trey is the plus there, right? Um, yeah, that, that you, I mean, that you, but we, we, we've hitters. already got him in the number, so we're still one dash two, including Trey. Any big hitters today? Put big plays, run the pass? Um, you know, we had a great uh, throw and catch. We worked some situations today at the end of the game. Man, we had a great throw and catch there uh, for a touchdown. That was a big play. And, uh, you know, I was on the turf field today, so I only saw Rakeem and Devois and Trey the whole day. I haven't got to grade it yet. And on the other field, the other three backs today. So, who got the touchdown? You know, I th I would hate to comment on that because I'm not for sure. I, I was watching our uh, protection on the play. I just know it was a heck of a throw and a heck of a catch. So I'd rather let. I, it's either I'm not, I don't want to comment because I don't want to spread a rumor. Not true. Some uh, live work today. A lot of live work. Uh, I'd say we had uh, it was third day and probably uh, 25 minutes, 30 minutes of live tackling. And I know all the running backs left the field walking, so it's a good day for me. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Guys.